Meta is opening up their operating system to give you more headsets. Netflix's password crackdown actually really freaking worked and Intel's fix for their CPUs kind of does the opposite. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about Meta deciding to open up its Quest OS operating system. That's what OS stands for. Good job, Brett. And it's gonna be available to third parties that wanna use it on their hardware, except for it's not gonna be called Quest OS anymore. It's going to be called Meta Horizon OS because they just need to keep changing the names of everything. Quest is dead. Stop, stop it. Stop wanting Oculus and Quest. It's it's gone. So the two companies that have been announced that are officially working on physical hardware is going to be Asus for gaming version as well as Lenovo for productivity, learning and entertainment. And it's also being reported that Meta is working on an inspired version of the Meta Quest that is uh, inspired by Xbox. So it's probably gonna be like black and green, which I, I guess it'll look kind of cool. But on top of this, Meta is also asking that Google pretty please bring your video games to our headset because Apple has all of their Apple arcade games, so we got none. There's no 2D arcade games that you can play in the virtual world, and we need to be exactly like Apple doing everything that they're doing. So Meta asking Android to come to an Android operating system because Horizon OS is based on Android. So this is, is the full circle. This is a pretty big deal in terms of, uh, I think, expanding the horizons for VR and mixed reality, especially considering uh, the, I guess Meta is really trying to be the Android of Apple's Vision OS. And so they're trying to do it in a similar way where there are hardware options compared to what you can get from Apple. I'm excited to see where this goes, uh, but given the state of things that Asus has built in terms of like their gaming handhelds, uh, uh, which I uh, have been struggling as of late. I'm not exactly sure what to expect from this. We'll, we'll we'll keep reporting as we find out more details about exactly what what these things are going to look like. I'm not necessarily sure that the thing that's been limiting Meta's adoption of their operating system is the lack of hardware options. I personally think that the Quest 2 at the 199 299 price point it's been at has been pretty accessible. Uh, the Meta Quest 3 at 500 bucks is a little less so, but it is more fully fledged out. I don't know that confusing uh, consumers with more options is what's going to be necessary to, to, to make VR take off. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I think it's a good thing. I just don't know if it's going to be a panacea here. So let me know what you think of that. Well, I let you know about today's video sponsor. Well, I kick it back. Yeah. My chair has legs that I can put my, my feet on. Today's video is sponsored by Hibata and their E3 ergonomic office chair. As a content creator, I spend a lot of time sitting at my desk and staring at a screen, and if my chair isn't comfortable, I, I feel it the next day for sure. Thankfully, the Hibata E3 ergonomic office chair is built to provide healthy and comfortable long-term sitting sessions. The chair itself was super easy to assemble and I couldn't wait to plunk it down in it for the first time. Hibata's T-shaped support system aims to directly solve the main pain points caused by long-term sitting by supporting the neck, the waist, and the shoulders. Featuring a liftable backrest that can assume nine different positions, allowing comfort for users of varying heights. It can support the shortest guy in the office, Michael, and the tallest guy here, me. And keeping your back comfortable is Hibata's three zone elastic lumbar support, providing a large support area that wraps slightly around your waist with an eight way adjustment system. Your back will be fully supported in the E3. It feels like something's like hugging you a little bit at the bottom and it's 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 nice. And rounding out the E3, you'll find a super adjustable 4D axis neck pillow and 60 adjustable armrests that move in pretty much any way you could think of. So no matter what position you're sitting in, including if you want to do this number, your neck and arms can get support tailored specifically to you. With its breathable and comfortable mesh design, the Hibata E3 ergonomic office chair will blow your current back breaking chair out of the water. Why are we blowing backs? Give your back a break and pick yourself up a new chair via the link in the description. A big thank you to Hibata for sponsoring today's video. Well, while you might be reclining in your Hibata chair in the future, you might want to consider potentially getting one of these Sapphire motherboards. They're releasing a B650 version, AM5 coming to Sapphire. 
Sapphire. I'm bringing this up because I forgot they made motherboards. They released the B550 in 2021. Now they're coming out with the B650 here in 2024. And they actually have some other hardware that they release, including a CPU cooler and a case, but those are only available over in Asia. They're kind of along the nitro theme. I like this nitro stuff. Sapphire, could you bring more to the US? I'd like to I'd like to see all of this. This is good expansion. Sapphire motherboard. Hey, why not? But while Sapphire is entering into an arena, Apple is removing themselves from one, which is their fine woven cases. This is something that they launched with the iPhone 15. This was supposed to be a replacement for their leather, especially in the eco conscientiousness type of way. Of course, this is coming out right around Earth Day. Perfect time for Apple to announce that their experiment on a uh, more eco-friendly case has failed. And it's mostly not because of the eco-friendliness, but because they suck. Their durability is next to nothing. I I mean, even when these things came out, they were getting panned across the board simply because they get super dirty. They leave scuff marks. There was reports that Apple stores were having to replace them every single day because people kept touching them with their grubby little paws and it created a, a dirty incident. So th the fact that it waited this long to get pulled is kind of intriguing, but it's going to get replaced by something in the future, a, a new material, whatever that happens to be. But this one didn't work out. It's okay, take the L Apple, let's move on. But I won't take any L's when it comes to Reese because he's my W. Yo, welcome back to TFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this Blue Snowball Ice USB microphone for only $27.99 on clearance, making it $22 off. But then next up, we have the Razer Viper Ultimate Lightweight Wireless Gaming Mouse plus RGB charging dock for only $84.99 making it $65 off. And then lastly, we have this ASUS Prime B760 Plus LGA 1700 ATX motherboard for only $99.99, making it $40 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, people thought they were getting a pretty horrific deal when Netflix announced that it was gonna crack down on account sharing, making everybody have their own account if they lived in separate locations from their parents or if they had a different geographical region that they were traveling to. Netflix was making you pay three or four bucks to have an add-on, or you had to get an account all for yourself, getting kicked off your parents' plan. It's like health insurance all over again. Well, it turns out, while a lot of people were saying, hey, Netflix, you're gonna cut, you're gonna rue the day. This is, this is gonna come back to bite you in that Netflix booty you got right there. It increased their profits 54%. They made a lot of money off of this plan, which is probably why we're hearing all of the other streaming services are planning to enact something like this. Similarly, Disney's supposed to start doing this, I believe in June or July. And this made it so that their subscribers increased. They increased their subscriber count 9.3 million accounts accounts worldwide, their profits up 54%. But I think Netflix kind of also knows that this isn't going to last forever. So one of the things that also came out here is that they're going to stop reporting how many subscribers they have, which they're discussing how the actual subscriber count doesn't necessarily indicate the health of their business, especially when if you can force people to start increasing from your base level tier plan of $7 a month all the way up to the $25 a month to get the 4K and you get four different TVs or whatever the frick it is then, you know, that one subscriber is worth a little bit more. This is not being met with a lot of praise from shareholders and people who are interested in Netflix stock saying that this seems to be an indication that things are going to get a little rough moving forward. But at least in the short term, which is all that needs to matter, their numbers went up, line went up, it's a good thing, but Intel's line is going down for Battle Mage. We wanted to get excited for the next gen cards, but it turns out they're already nerfing the cards before they're released. Reports are coming out from the Linux drivers of the Battle Mage GPUs that while it can do uncompressed AK 144 hertz based on the display bandwidth, that's actually down from the 20 gigabits that it was supposed to do. The Battle Mage cards were supposed to support ultra high bit rate of 20 gigabits per second, but now they're being decreased to be 13.5, which is increased from the 10 that is currently on the Arc Alchemist cards. What does this practically matter? Absolutely nothing. Every RX 7000 series cards for the consumer is on UHBR 13.5. Uh, NVIDIA doesn't support anything higher than that. There's only three displays that support 
support the 20 gigabits per second and that's a announced displays none of them are out this likely is a, a nothing thing because none of the cards are going to hit 8k 144 fps unless you're playing like one of the oldest games known to man so it's really not a huge problem it's just a thing that that is getting announced we got more details about battle mage stuff and we've got more testing about what's going on with intel stability issues on their high-end 13th and 14th gen series cpus specifically 13900k 14900k and the like we talked about in yesterday's episode of hot news how asus released a intel baseline profile profile for their BIOSes so that you can update it and make it so that your chip runs within Intel spec, even though the power limit is still technically out of spec for Intel, which is just fantastic. The baseline profile still isn't even the freaking baseline for the chip, which is how we got into this mess in the first place. But benchmarks are coming out showing that this is a pretty significant decrease to these processors. Hardware Lux got to testing the 14900K with these new Intel baseline profile settings. And what they found is that when it comes to just raw CPU benchmarks, you're losing about eight to 9% performance. Specifically, if you're playing video games that are CPU bound, you could potentially see eight to 9% FPS loss in those. You are decreasing the power by about 20%. So that's a significant power drop in power savings there, but it's coming at the cost of performance, which it's gonna be intriguing to see how that changes the value of these Intel CPUs moving forward. If a 14900K is actually 10% worse than it was when when it launched, where's the real incentive to pick that up over something like a 7800 or 7950 X3D? It just, it becomes less compelling. So we'll keep our eyes out to see if there's uh, more benchmarks comparing, you know, in, Intel's high end versus what AMD has to offer, because this is, this is gonna start changing things. However, this is only Asus's motherboards at the current moment. As of the time of recording, there's no other motherboard BIOS that has been updated to support a baseline profile like this. And while it does seem like it's a impacting Intel's chips on a variety of motherboards. It's not quite clear if it's more disproportionately happening on things like Asus's motherboards because of the fact that they have things like multi-core enhancement turned on as well as the higher SVID settings. We'll keep our eyes on this, but this is not this is not boding well for Intel if the only way to keep your chip stable is to reduce its performance, not, not lower the voltage like what was happening with the 7800 X3Ds when they were exploding, um, but actually reducing its capacity overall. The, <sighs> tough times ahead and tough times for me in yesterday's episode of hot news in the comments so let's get into that we got kryptonite saying you can get amd motherboards with built-in thunderbolt however if they have thunderbolt built in it means the board maker paid and dealt with the licensing can't remember which amd mobos have it but wendell did a video months ago showcasing a built-in thunderbolt working on an amd board it is an intel technology but they don't lock it down like they do frame gen tech from gpus yeah i i thought i was being pretty clear on that like you can have thunderbolt on other components. Um, I, I mean, I have personal experience with the ASRock X570 that launched that had Thunderbolt on it. And when I asked ASRock about that specifically way back at Computex when that got shown off, and I was like, how did you uh, get permission from Intel to put Thunderbolt on an AMD board? They said, we just didn't tell them about it, which um, may have been just like a cute little aside because uh, doing some like general research, it turns out that Intel made Thunderbolt royalty free back in 2018. So like it can be used in various capacities, which is how it's getting integrated into USB 4, at least the Thunderbolt 3 protocol. But fundamentally, regardless of if it's being used on AMD or if it's being used in USB 4, it's still an Intel technology. The only caveat there that I um, neglected to kind of mention yesterday is the fact that it's also, it was co-developed by Apple. So Apple using Thunderbolt and Intel using Thunderbolt, they can both make their own chips. It's royalty free for other people to use it, but it's still an Intel technology, if that makes sense. Intel is setting the specifications and the standards and all of that in order to, to move forward with that. At this point, we're getting like super pedantic. I, I think the original comment, uh, you know, about about, hey, you're saying Intel Wi-Fi 7 and Intel Thunderbolt. Well, that's because they are. This is this is Intel Thunderbolt in an Intel laptop. It is Intel Wi-Fi 7 in an Intel laptop. It's an NVIDIA GPU, but it is Intel's Thunderbolt technology in here. So me specifying that it's Intel is is it's the same as me specifying any other component. It's just that I'm highlighting those because it was an Intel sponsored video. I think the point 
came across even if I was uh, not clear on certain aspects of that. And then we got Salem saying, I really hope Kyler saw the comments on that video. I'm in total agreement that when he's in his element, he is an outstanding creator and I can't wait to see more stuff from him. Uncle Buttersworth saying, if he breaks less stuff, guys like Mr. Magoo. Kyler, did you hear that? I break stuff? You're an outstanding creator. Uh -uh. Do you want to come, you want to come talk to people about making videos for a second? Hey guys, I'm critically acclaimed director of the hit YouTube video, uh, 70, se uh, what is that? 750 Ti in 2024. How does it do that still? Thanks for your input. You're the best. Thanks for watching. This is just how he is. But when he focuses, when you get him to write his thoughts down, it's better than when they come out raw like that. Y you need to be cooked. Kyler needs time in the oven. I gotta bake a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you do got a bagel, a little bit. Then we got Adam saying, physical media disappearing, but vinyl remains after disappearing. Hopefully that renaissance happens for games, including those new Game Boys and Retrons, etc. cetera. Uh, new Game Boys, what are we referring to? The Switch? And then we got Dozer saying, laundry tip, take your shirts out of the tumble dry a bit early while they are still damp and hang them in the closet. We'll be mostly wrinkle free in an hour or two by the time they're dry. I said, too much extra effort, no thanks. My my dryer's down here. I like I wash my clothes when I'm busy doing other things. That's the great part of uh, these little machines that we get to do our little chores for us. You don't have to watch them. You don't have to be there being like, oh, I, it's just too much for me. I, I understand that there's tips and tricks and I could even iron. I, I do own an iron and a little tiny ironing board. I could I could make a little bit extra effort. And maybe now that we've talked about it so much, I might be a little bit extra conscientious about my uh, my wrinkles, my, my clothing. But uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to take my clothes out early from the, the tumble dryer. I'm definitely not paying attention enough for that to happen. But let's talk about how else I was wrong yesterday. We got Degenerated 09 saying, if I recall correctly, there's a 20 gigabyte version of the 3080 Ti, which I guess was also an engineering sample, but boy, it would have been one hell of an option if it was an official card for the masses. And that is actually the card that I was talking about yesterday. I mentioned the RTX 30, 80 uh, 10 gig, which was an official card that released. The one I was thinking of was the RTX 3080. I don't think it was a TI. I think it was the 3080 20 gig. I did some looking up of this afterwards because I was like, that that didn't feel right. 10 gigs sounded wrong. And it, it was the RTX 3080 20 gig, which was found in uh, retail stores over in Russia. Like they actually officially made it, but then uh, never sold it. it. It seems like they may have sold it to miners at some point. So that I meant the 20 gig a lot of people were like, I didn't think the 10 gig was that rare. It, it wasn't. It was just like an addendum on the 3080. One person when talking about rare GPUs said that they had an RTX 2060 KO, which also wasn't that rare. I mean, EVGA sold that. I think I'm not sure if EVGA was the only one that sold it, but like it wasn't a um, limited release, limited run. Like you shouldn't have the card. That's my thoughts on the comments. I'm going to be done. I'm getting out of here. going to go break free to do more hot news tomorrow. You can't stop me. More hot tech news then. And Kyler's working on a video right now about MetaQuest. Ain't that right, buddy? He. Meta. 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 Meta.